ladies and gentlemen. The story you are about to hear is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Dragnet is brought to you by Chesterfield, made by Liggett and Myers, first major tobacco company to give you a complete line of quality cigarettes. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned a homicide detail. You get a call that a woman has been badly beaten. The circumstances indicate foul play. Your job? Check it out. The nation's top golfers and sports writers have named Ben Hogan Professional Golfer of the Year. Ben, of course, smokes Chesterfields. But let's hear what he has to say about them himself. I'm a Chesterfield smoker and have been for seven years. The reason's simple. Chesterfield is the best for me. They're milder and they taste great. Try them yourself. Take that suggestion from Ben Hogan today. Try Chesterfield, regular or king size. They're low in nicotine, highest in quality, really mild, really satisfying. Chesterfield, best for you. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case transcribed from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Tuesday, November 17th. It was raining in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of homicide detail. My partner's Frank Smith. The boss is Captain Lorman. My name's Friday. We were on our way back from the main jail, and it was 11.27 p.m. when we got to room 42. Homicide. We've got to get that car radio fixed, Joe. It's getting worse all the time. Yeah, well, we can take it over in the morning. The thing almost knocked me right out of the seat when I called in the night. As soon as you press the button, bang, you get a shot. Yeah, when I was out with Lopey yesterday, he picked up the mic. I thought he was going to climb right out of the window. Yeah, well, that's pretty funny as long as you don't have to use the thing. Well, there must be a short someplace, huh? Got to get it fixed. You know, I must have used a dollar's worth of dimes calling in today. If this keeps up, I'm going to have to give up lunches. Well, that wouldn't hurt you either. That's not kind, Joe. I've lost seven pounds in the last two weeks. Where? I'm going to see about a transfer. Well, let's finish up this report so we can get out of here. What do you say? Okay, I'm with you. Hot shot, I get it. That's a robbery call, bar out in the Olympic. Oh, thought for a minute we were going to have to go out. All I want to do is get home and get some dry socks on. My feet are killing me. Yeah, well, I got an idea. If you'll stop talking and pick up a pencil, we can quit on time for a change. Another hot shot. I'll get it. Get your hat. Beating out in Hollywood. Yeah? Woman found her laying in the gutter. She's still alive? Was when they got the call. We better step on it, though. Uh Uh-huh. They don't know how long she's going to last. When we got to the address we'd been given by the complaint board, two radio cars from Hollywood Division were already there. An ambulance had arrived, and the crew was doing what they could for the victim. She was still alive, but the attendant said that she appeared to have a skull fracture in addition to possible internal injuries. From one of the officers who answered the call, we found that the victim had been sprawled across the sidewalk, her head in the gutter. Due to the heavy rain, a stream of water was running down and into a storm drain. The fact that the drain was above the victim's head appeared to be the only thing that saved her from drowning. The crime lab had been called, and the men from Hollywood Division were doing what they could to keep the crowd back in order to preserve any physical evidence that might have been left. The victim appeared to be a woman in her early 40s. The clothes she wore looked expensive, but they were badly torn. Her face was cut, and the men in the ambulance crew removed her immediately to Hollywood Emergency Hospital for treatment. An officer was assigned to her in the event she regained consciousness. When she was found, her left shoe was missing and there was no sign of any purse or wallet. None of the people who'd gathered in the crowd could give us an identification of her. The homes in the vicinity were large and the area was sparsely populated. The nearest house to the place where the victim was found was at least 300 feet down the street. We talked to the people in the crowd and found that the man who'd made the original call was still supposed to be there. We checked with the officers in the radio unit, but they said they hadn't seen him. From them, however, we found that the call had been from the home of a Mr. and Mrs. Roger Heflin. We contacted them, and they came back to the scene and pointed out the man. Frank and I took him over to our car for questioning. All right, Johnson, you want to tell us what happened? I don't know. 
You called the police, didn't you? Yeah, I called them. You found her? Yes, sir. She was lying in the street like that. I got scared and I called the police. I thought maybe she was dead. What were you doing up here this time of night? Just walking around. You live up here, do you? No. Where do you live? Got a room down a fountain. Let me see your identification, will you please? Oh, yeah. Here's my wallet. Any money in it? No. All right, let me have it. Yeah, here you are. This your true name? Cecil August Johnson? Yeah. Who's Mary Johnson? Hmm? I say, who's Mary Johnson? Who's she? My sister. Is this her address here on the card? Yeah. Hey, you aren't going to call her, are you? You aren't going to call her. Why? Well, she'd be pretty sore about it if you did. She don't like me for me to get mixed up with cops. She don't like it at all. You ever been in an institution? Hmm? State institution. You ever been in one? Yeah. I was in Camarillo once. How long ago did you get out? Oh, long time ago. Three days. Long time ago. I haven't been there for a long time. What were you there for? Molesting people. Who? I was in Camarillo. Why'd they send you there, fella? To get well. From what? Just well. Yeah, we know. And what'd they want you to get well from? I was never in Camarillo. You haven't been drinking tonight, have you? Hmm? I said you've been drinking. Yeah, a little bit. Where? Bar down Highway Boulevard. When they sent you to the hospital, what was the reason? i never been to the hospital. You told us that you'd been in Camarillo. Well, that was to get well. Now, look, fella, we asked you before. What for? They thought I was molesting people. Were you? No, I didn't hurt anybody. Did they say you did? Yeah. Who? A lady. They said I hit her. Did you hit her? Huh? I said, did you hit the woman? No, I never hurt anybody. You know who the woman is that you found? You aren't going to call my sister, are you? Do you know who the woman is? What woman? Now, look, fella, pay attention. The one you found tonight. Yeah, I've known her for a long time. What's her name? Grace. You know her last name? Hmm? Do you know her last name? No. You know, i never really been in camera. I just told you that. That's all why. I don't know. Just sometimes I like to do things like that. I, I don't have no reason. I just like to do it. Like, once I told my sister I killed a man, she almost fainted. I just like to do that once in a while. Things get dull. I like to get them started. Where'd you meet Grace? Bar down in Hollywood. I go in there all the time. I met her there. Did you meet her there tonight? Yeah. Yeah, she was there. Said she had a fight with her old man. Said they had a real beef. She told me he hit her. Belted her right in the mouth. What do you think of a guy do a thing like that to a woman? Any man do a thing like that, he's no good. No good at all. They said I did it, too. Told my sister I hit a woman. Who said that? Other cops when they arrested me. When was this? When I was at Camarilla to get well. You under a doctor's care now? No. no I got real well at Camarilla, real well. They let me go. You just got through telling us that you'd never been there. I'm a liar. You can't believe anything I say. I'm a real liar. My sister's all the time saying that about me. She says I'm a liar. That's one of the reasons she used to get sore at me. I'm such a liar. I was never there. You know where this Grace lived? No, I think it was up on Ledgewood Drive. I, I think that's where it was, on Ledgewood Drive. You know where the house is? Mm-mm. I never saw it. I was going to go up there one day and punch your old man in the nose. You know, because he hit Grace. I was plenty sore about it. He gave her a black eye. I was plenty sore. But I didn't. You know why? You tell us. Because I thought my sister would get mad at me. She always gets mad when I get in fights. And when I lie. She get real sore. She's got no sense of humor. Yeah. There's a guy at the hospital that had a real sense of humor. He was funny. He had a piece of inner tube and he wore it like a hat. Floppy, you know? He had a real great sense of humor. But my sister, she don't like anybody to laugh. How many times have you been arrested, fella? Maybe a couple. Here in Los Angeles? Yeah, all the time in L.A. Cops here don't like me. They got no sense of humor. None. I never saw such dull cops. All right, Johnson, you wait here. We got a few things to check out and then we want to take you downtown. You aren't going to arrest me, are you? We'll see. Well, I hope not. My sister, she'd be real sore. Johnson? Hmm? Tell me something. Did you hit her? You mean, did I hit Grace? Is that what you mean? That's what I mean. No. I met her tonight, and she asked me to take a walk with her. To take a walk, that's all. Then all of a sudden, she was lying on the ground. I was pretty drunk. I didn't know what happened. Just all of a sudden, she was there, and I got scared, and I called the cops. But I didn't hit her. I wouldn't do a thing like that to Grace, not me. You believe that, don't you? Well, don't you? You gotta buy it. You got it, because it's the truth. Is that right? Sure. It's the truth. Every word. Well, you said it yourself, didn't you? Hmm? You're an awful liar. 12.52 a.m. While one of the officers from a radio unit stood by with Cecil Johnson, we talked with Lieutenant Lee Jones from the crime lab. He told us that what footprints they'd found in the immediate vicinity of the victim had been destroyed by the rain. He told us that his crew was unable to find any useful physical evidence. 
The area was searched, but we failed to find either the missing left shoe or the woman's purse, if she'd carried one. We put in a call to the Hollywood Receiving Hospital. Dr. Elwin Terrell told us that the victim was suffering from a fracture of the skull and apparently several broken ribs. He told us that the woman was in a deep coma and she couldn't be questioned at that time. We asked him to contact us through the business office in the event that she regained consciousness. We questioned the people in the neighborhood, but they were of no aid. None of them recalled hearing any automobiles on the streets, and none of them could testify as to the people loitering in the area. 1.10 a.m. We took Cecil Johnson and had him detained at the city jail pending further investigation. A check of his record showed that he'd been sent to Camarillo twice on charges of molesting and violation of Section 245 PC. He'd been released into the custody of his sister three weeks previously. Before he was placed in a cell, we got the name and address of the bar where he said he'd met the woman he called Grace. 1.40 a.m. Frank and I drove out to the place. It was located on Hollywood Boulevard near Las Palmas Avenue. There was only one other customer in the place when we went in. The bartender was cleaning up for the night. What'll it be? We're looking for Emil. I'm him. What do you want? It's not about that lousy Jackie, is it? What's that? You're cops, aren't you? Isn't this about Jackie? We're police officers, yeah. You gotta understand, I thought he was an actor. You know, I thought he was just hanging around the place to take work calls. That's what he told me. I didn't have no way of knowing different. It's the truth. We don't know anything about Jackie. We'd like to ask you some questions about a man named Cecil Johnson. That crackpot? You know, I thought you were after me because of Jackie. Oh, there it goes again. Excuse me. Yeah. Hello? Here it is. No, he ain't here anymore. What? I don't care how the horse did. Jackie ain't here. Now, don't call me no more. You see, this guy Jackie's a book. All the time he's using my phone, and I don't know it. Yesterday, a couple of cops come in and put the arm on him. All day, the phone's been ringing. Yeah. From what they say, he's lucky he got arrested. He must have lost his shirt yesterday. Horse came in that paid 20 to 1. Boy, he really must have had it. I see. Now, what do you know about this Cecil Johnson? A creep. A real creep. Did you see him tonight? Yeah, he was in. About what time? Let's see. It was uh, just before the fight on TV. That'll make it about 6.45. Yeah, about then. About 6.45. He come in alone? Oh, yeah. Always does. He don't have no friends. What time did he leave? Do you remember? Well, we stayed around and watched the fight. Got into an argument with a the guy. Then he left about... Uh, well, let's see. I guess it must have been about 9.30, quarter of 10. You know a woman named Grace? We understand she's in here quite a bit. Grace, huh? Well, we've got a couple of Graces come in here. What's yours look like? About 42, dark hair, wearing a tweed coat. Uh, excuse me a minute, huh? Yeah. Hello? Yeah, it is. No, he's not here. He won't be back, so stop calling. I don't care if it did pay that. Look, but I got no part in the action. Now, forget the number, huh? Jackie's gone. He's in the can. Yeah, he's pinched. Now, lay off, huh? Now, let's see. Dark hair, tweed coat. Oh, yeah, that'll be Grace Dillon. Dillon? Yeah, she's pretty much of a regular. Uh, D-I-L-L-O-N. Yeah, I guess so. D-I-L-L-O-N. I guess that's the way to spell it. Well, what's all the questions? Something wrong? What time was she in here tonight? Who says she was? Well, that's what we understand. Oh. Oh, yeah, well, there's nothing wrong around here. No reason not to cooperate. She was here, come in about 8... What time she leave? Well, I guess it was 9.30, 9.45. She leave alone? I gotta think about that. All right. Lots of people in here with the fights, you know. Let me think. Uh, I'm gonna tear that thing right out of the wall. He ain't here. He's been pinched. I don't know when he'll be back, and I don't care. You know, come to think about it, I think she left with that Cecil. Johnson? Yeah. Did either one of them have much to drink, do you know? Well, Cecil had a couple of beers. That's all he needs. Don't take much with him. How about the Dillon woman? She was feeling no pain when she got here. Really carrying a load. I finally told her to take a walk. Told her I couldn't serve her no more. That's when she left. Her and Cecil were sitting right there next to each other. When I told her I wouldn't pour no more for her, she got hacked and her and Cecil left. You know where she lives? Not right off. I, I can look it up. We keep a list of people who come in here. Send them announcements about things. Like when we get a new piano play. Things like that. I see. I can look it up for you. Just take a minute. Fine, thanks. C-A-B-C. Oh, here it is. Darby, Dexter, Dibbs. I wish he'd come in and pick up the tab we can. Oh, let's see here. Here it is. Here it is. 2917 Ledgewood Drive. 2917. Thank you. You can take the card if you want. Don't make any difference to me if she never comes back. The way she carried on tonight. People just don't understand. What's that? You can just serve them so much. After that, you're pouring a hundred proof trouble. You got to shut them off sometime. Uh huh. She ever come in here with her husband? Dylan? Yeah. A couple of times. Quite a while ago, though. They came in late one night, sat back there in the booth, had a couple of quick belts. He drinks Irish whiskey, likes it neat. They had a big beef. I finally had to go back and ask him to go out. He's a real bum. He's mean. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
The kind of guy where to know him is to hate him. You know the kind? Yeah. He ain't here. I don't care how much you lost. He's in the can and what... What? Oh, yeah, honey. Well, I didn't know it was you. Uh-huh. Hey, yeah, I'll be home early as soon as I close up. Right. Yeah, well, I do, too. What? All right, honey. I love you. I do, too, mean it. Look, honey, there's a, there's a couple of men here I got to talk to, huh? Well, yeah, as soon as I close up, yeah. Hey, hey, goodbye, honey. What? Oh, yeah, yeah, all right. There. Bye. It's the, it's the wife. We've just been married a couple of weeks. She's kind of, uh, you know. Yeah. Did Dylan ever hit his wife, would you know? Yeah, he did. She came in here one night with a mouse that had no end. Said her old man gave it to her. Say, what's all this about anyway? There's something wrong with Grace? Something happened to her? Well, we don't know yet. Well, let me give you this for free. If there's anything happened to her, six to an even was her old man. He's a real bum. He's mean. Anything wrong, and it's him that caused it. You better talk to him. You'll find out. All right, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir, we will. Thanks. No, not at all. Glad to help out. All right. Good night. Uh, say, you guys going downtown? Yeah, that's right. To the jail? Yeah. Well, if you see Jackie, will you give him a message for me? All right. What's that? Tell him if he gets out, I don't want him back here no more. Okay. Guy ties up my phone. Two twenty-six a.m. We got a description of the victim's husband and checked the name through R and I. We were unable to come up with any criminal record on him. Frank and I drove out to the address given us by the bartender. It was a large English stucco house, five blocks from where Grace Dillon had been found. We rang the bell and waited. An elderly woman answered the door and told us that Herman Dillon was not in. She explained that she was a babysitter and that she'd been called to take care of the couple's three children. She went on to say that Mr. Dillon left the house at approximately 10, 15 p.m. and had not yet returned. We called the office and arranged for a stakeout to be set up on the house. While we waited for the officers to arrive, the babysitter told us that the Dillons had constant fights. She said that on several occasions, Mr. Dillon threatened to kill his wife if she didn't spend more time at home taking care of the children. She went on to explain that there'd been an argument that evening and that after a loud fight, the wife had left the house. After she'd been gone for over an hour, Herman Dillon left to find her. 3.02 a.m., the officers arrived. We asked them to wait for the husband to return and then to notify us immediately. Frank and I drove downtown and checked into the crime lab. We talked with Lieutenant Lee Jones regarding his findings. He told us that he'd gone over the victim's clothing, but he was unable to find any physical evidence to help us in finding her assailant. 3.46 a.m., we checked into the office and put in a call to the hospital. How do you spell that, Doc? Huh? Uh, A-D-E. Yes, sir. Do you have any idea when that might be? I see, sir. Mm-hmm. Well, if you'll let us know. Right. Yeah, the business office here will know how to reach us. Right. Thanks again. Good night, Doc. How is she? Well, the doctor says he's finished his examination. She's got a frontal bone fracture, three broken ribs, cuts, and contusions. Is she going to be all right? Yeah, you think so. So she might come out of it any time. Says it looks like she might have been thrown from a car. Well, that would explain the missing shoe and purse, wouldn't it? Yeah. Do you have any idea when we can talk to her? No, might not do any good anyway. What do you mean? Well, the doc says this kind of fracture can produce a retrograde amnesia. Huh? She won't remember anything. You are listening to Dragnet, the authentic story of your police force in action. It's taking place at your dealers, cigarette dealers, coast to coast. Smokers by the thousands are now changing to Chesterfield. Join them today, and you'll be smoking the only cigarette that gives you proof of low nicotine, highest quality. I want you to know that's a matter of record, and so is this. As I've been telling you, Chesterfield is the only cigarette with this proven record with smokers. No adverse effects to the nose, throat, and sinuses from smoking Chesterfield. Good reasons why you should change to Chesterfield? You bet. Ask for Chesterfield. Regular or king size, best for you. Four oh two a.m. Frank and I signed out of the office and we went home. At five thirteen a.m. I got a call that the husband of the victim, Herman Dillon, had returned home. The officers of call said that they were bringing him down to the city hall. I got in touch with Frank, and by the time we got to the squad room, Dillon was already there. He appeared dazed and acted as if he'd been drinking heavily. 
We sent out for some black coffee for him. He apparently didn't know what had happened to his wife. What's all this about, anyway? What are you dragging me out of my house like this for? Got a few questions we want to ask you, Dylan. What do you got that's so important you got to go through it at 6 in the morning? When did you see your wife last? About 7.30 last night. Why? How do you and your wife get along? We've been married for 10 years. Not much of an answer, mister. You're not married. Been married 10 years and it's an answer. Been married 10 years, it's all the answer you need. Well, maybe you better spell it out for me. After that long, you have a few disagreements. Bound to. You know, being together all that time. You and your wife have a disagreement last night, did you? Yeah, we had a discussion. What about? I don't think that's any of your business. Yeah, well, maybe it is. Now, what'd you argue about? A running around. Wasn't a real argument, just a discussion. Well, we got it. It was more than that. And you got it wrong. We heard you hit her a couple of times. That's a lie. I might have shoved her a little. She had it coming, though, all the time running around. We got three kids, three little kids, and she doesn't care that for them. Always going out, hanging around those cheap bars, boozing it up. I came home the other night. She'd walked out and left the kids all alone, all by themselves. Didn't even get a sitter for them. Where you been tonight? Why? Why you have to know that? You want to tell us? Yeah. After Grace and me had the fight, she walked out. I waited for her to come home. Then when she didn't, I went out to find her. Did you? Hmm? Did you find her? No, I looked all over for her. All the bars along the boulevard, but she wasn't there. Where you been since the bars closed? Walking around. And all this rain? Yeah. I've been trying to figure out what to do, trying to make up my mind. About what? What I should do with Grace. Things can't go on like this. They just can't. We've heard from some of your wife's friends that you made threats in their lives. Is that right? Who told you that? We just heard it. Is it true? Yeah, I suppose so. If I'd have found her tonight, I'd have maybe killed her. I'd never been so mad before. You see anybody you knew tonight? What? When you were walking around, did you see anybody you knew? No, why? When you got no way to prove where you were. Why do I have to do that? Might make things easier on you. Hey, what's this all about, anyway? Why are you asking all these questions about me and Grace? What are you trying to say? Where is Grace, you know? Yeah. Well, where is she? What's happened to her? She's in the hospital. She's had an accident. It's pretty bad. What kind of an accident? Looks like she was beaten. And you think I did it? Might have been you. She lied? Yeah. You think I beat her up? Did you? No. I maybe wanted to, knock some sense into her, but I didn't do it. You prove where you were tonight? Why? Can you prove where you were? No, I don't even know myself. Hey, you, you really think I did it? That's what we're trying to find out. You know, I was pretty drunk tonight. I got real loaded. That's a terrible part. Yeah, let me see your hands, will you? Why? Let me see them. All right. Put them up there, both of them. Here. Where'd you get those bruises? I don't know. I don't remember. You better try. This is pretty important. I told you I was drunk. There's only one thing that'll put bruises like that on your hands. Yeah. You hit something pretty hard. Herman Dillon was detained pending further investigation. We'd called the hospital, but there was no change in Mrs. Dillon's condition. Because of the lack of physical evidence, her testimony was essential in apprehending the person who'd beaten her. We had two prime suspects. Cecil Johnson, who was known to have been in her company when she left the bar. Johnson's record indicated that he was capable of committing the crime. On the other hand, the victim's husband had stated that he might kill her. He was unable to explain his movements at the time of the attack. The only person who could tell us the true story was the victim herself, and we had the doctor's statement that she might not remember the events immediately leading up to the beating. At 10.14 a.m. the following morning, the officer called from the hospital telling us that Mrs. Dillon had regained consciousness and could be questioned. The doctor told us that she was calling for her husband and asked that we bring Dillon with us. We went by the city jail and picked him up, and then we drove over to the hospital. The doctor told us that Mrs. Dillon was in a weak condition and that we couldn't talk to her at any length. Frank, Dylan, and I went into her room and waited for her to open her eyes. Is that you, Herman? Yes, dear. You're not mad at me, are you? You're not still mad at me? No, dear, I'm not. Oscar, I was afraid you still were mad. You know, Herman, you shouldn't have hit me like you did. I know maybe I had a reason, but you shouldn't have hit me. Can you tell us what happened, Mrs. Dillon? Who are you? Police officers. What are you doing here? Trying to find out who did this to you. Wasn't anybody did it. Ma'am? Yeah. Wasn't anybody. I did it myself. Silly did it all by myself. I don't believe I understand, Miss Dillon. Him and me had a fight and I walked out. I was going to leave him. I went down and had a few drinks, just a few, and I got to thinking about me and Herman. How I was such a bad wife. I got to thinking about the kids and how I was a bad mother. You aren't still mad at me, are you, Herman? Really, in your heart? No, Grace, I'm glad you're going to be all right. That's all that counts. You want to tell us what happened, Miss Dillon, please? I was on my way home. I was going back. 
Cecil was walking home with me. It was raining pretty hard, and we came to a gutter that was full of water. I stepped up on the curb to go around it. I didn't want to step in the water, and I fell. Fell down the hill, rolled all the way to the bottom, all the way to the next street. I remember falling. I remember laying in the street down below and how I couldn't move. I didn't know about anything else after that. Until just when you got here, Len, I don't remember much of anything. You mean that you fell down yourself, that nobody beat you up, huh? No. Herman hit me when I was home. He got mad at me and hit me. But he was right. You were right, honey, real right. But it's going to be different, I promise you. Just as long as you ain't still mad at me, that's all that matters, that you ain't mad. Now, take it easy, honey. Everything's going to be all right. Just take it easy and try to get some sleep. I love you, Herman. I love you very much. And I'm going to make it all up to you, all the bad times. I'm going to make it all up to you. I love you, too, Grace. Now, you go to sleep. Get some rest. All right, honey. All right, thank you, Miss Dillon. We better go. You gonna want me anymore, Sergeant? No, I don't think so. I wonder if she means it. If she really does. What's that? About making it up to the kids, how things are gonna be different. Well, I don't know. She said she would. And that's just it. Hmm? She said it so many times before. The story you have just heard is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. On November 18th, a meeting was held in the captain's office, Homicide Division. In a moment, the results of that meeting. Now, here is our star, Jack Webb. Thank you, George Fenneman. Friends, we've been getting letters from people all over the country telling us that they've switched to Chesterfield. Now, just as I've been telling you, thousands of smokers are changing to Chesterfield because only Chesterfield gives proof of low nicotine, highest quality. That's why I recommend you try them today. Regular or king size, Chesterfields are really mild, really satisfying best for you. Since no crime had been committed, no legal action was taken against Mr. and Mrs. Dillon. Cecil August Johnson was removed to room 5, Georgia Street Receiving Hospital for further psychiatric examination. Just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice comes from the office of Chief of Police W.H. Parker, Los Angeles Police Department. Technical advisors Captain Jack Donahoe, Sergeant Marty Wynn, Sergeant Vance Brasher. Heard tonight were Ben Alexander, Jack Crucian, Vivi Janis, Harry Bartell. Script by John Robinson. Music by Walter Schumann. Hal Gibney speaking. Watch an entirely new Dragnet case history each week on your local NBC television station. Please check your newspapers for the day and time. Chesterfield has brought you Dragnet, transcribed from Los Angeles. Have you tried new cork tip Fatima? It's the smooth smoke with Fatima tips of perfect cork. King size for longer filtering. And Fatima quality for a much better flavor and aroma. Fatima is made and guaranteed by Liggett and Myers Tobacco Company. Try Fatima today. Here, Frank Sinatra as Rocky Fortune tonight on the NBC Radio Network.